generating standard curve, to analyze the reaction optimization, in real-time qPCR. A standard curve can be generated using a tenfold dilution of a template amplified on a real-time system. Each dilution can assate in triplicate. Below are the data generated after a real-time PCR run. The template used for this purpose can be, a target with known concentration for example, nanograms of genomic DNA or copies of plasmid DNA. Or a sample of unknown quantity here plasmid is used as the template for the reaction. The standard curve is generated, by plotting the log of the starting quantity of template, against the cycle threshold value obtained during amplification of each dilution. Below is the standard curve graph generated using the data obtained after the PCR run, here CT value is plotted against log DNA dilution. Generated standard curve. The equation of the linear regression line, along with Pearson's correlation coefficient or the coefficient of determination, can then be used to evaluate whether your QPCR assay is optimized. Real-time quantification, is based on the relationship between initial template amount and the CT value obtained during amplification, an optimal QPCR assay is absolutely essential for accurate and reproducible quantification of the sample. The hallmarks of an optimized QPCR assay are Linear standard curve High amplification efficiency Consistency across replicate reactions One should strive to achieve a PCR efficiency above 90%. QPCR calculations. As everyone knows in PCR one copy of the template becomes two after the first cycle. The template copy number keeps accumulating as the number of cycles proceeds. It is given by a general formula. 2 to the power n, after 25 cycles one copy of the template becomes 3355443 copies or 3.35 into 10 to the power 7 copies. If perfect doubling occurs with each amplification cycle, the spacing of the fluorescence curves will be determined by the equation 2n equals dilution factor, where n is the number of cycles between curves at the fluorescence threshold. For example, with a tenfold serial dilution of DNA, 2 to the power n equals 10. Therefore, n equals 3.32, and the CT values should be separated by 3.32 cycles. If the PCR assay has 100% efficiency, one copy becomes two after one cycle, so how to calculate PCR efficiency? Amplification efficiency denoted by E can be calculated from the below equation. E equals 10, 1 slash slope. Amplification efficiency is also frequently presented as a percentage, that is, the percent of template that was amplified in each cycle. An efficiency close to 100% is the best indicator of a robust, reproducible assay. Low reaction efficiencies less than 90% may be caused by poor primer design or by suboptimal reaction conditions. Reaction efficiencies greater than 100% may indicate pipetting error in serial dilutions or CO amplification of nonspecific products, such as primer dimers. When using the method described above to determine amplification efficiency, the presence of inhibitor can also result in an apparent increase in efficiency. This is because samples with the highest concentration of template, also have the highest level of inhibitors, which cause a delayed CT, whereas samples with lower template concentrations have lower levels of inhibitors, so the CT is minimally delayed. As a result, the absolute value of the slope decreases and the calculated efficiency appears to increase.